Welcome to America's Commercial Real Estate Show, your source for market intel, forecasts, and strategies. Hello, I'm Michael Bull. Thank you for being with us. This segment is brought to you by the C5 CCIM Global Summit. Now, I'm going to give you a website. You want to write this down. Uh, this is three days of networking, uh, training, and investing, and doing deals. You want to check it out. It's going to be in Atlanta, September 28th to September 30th. This is a global event. The website to check it out is C5 Summit dot real estate all right well we have a fun show for you today look one of the things that's real important in commercial real estate is picking picking your partners right so if you're equity and you're looking for an operating partner what should you think about especially today or if you're on the other side of the, of the branch you're an operator you have you're doing a development or you're buying existing property and you're looking for equity whether it's private high net worth individuals maybe it's institutional what are some tips for you today and it's kind of a changing landscape so let's see what's going on please welcome my guest it's eliza bailey she's ceo and cio of bailey investment group and she's here in studio one thanks for joining us yeah, thanks for having me michael and am i saying it right belay Belay Investment Belay Group. Belay Investment yeah, Group. That's right. That's, that's right. right. Now, you need to do a, a quick disclaimer, I understand. Yes, so let's yes. do if that. If I could just get that out of the way for you. Get it out of the way. Yeah, that'd be great. Okay. So, America's Commercial Real Estate Show is not a client of Belay and is not a paid sponsor of the program. Um, nothing discussed during this podcast should be considered an offer to sell, a solicitation of an offer to buy, or a recommendation of any security or any other product or service by Belay. Glad we have that out of the way. Right, right. And the, <laughs> and the attorneys are now are happy. Yeah, right? We've yeah, got that ever right, done. Right. Thank you. So let's talk about that. You know, let's say that uh, you are you are a, a, a developer or you're a sponsor. You're buying an existing project. You're looking at equity day. It's kind of been a changing landscape, hasn't it? Yeah, it definitely has. It definitely has. So, yeah. I mean, the equity partnership right now um, has changed a little bit because of things like the denominator effect. Right. I don't know if everybody's familiar with that, but basically the stock market going down, a lot of the large institutional clients, which is who we primarily work with, um, they are affected by that because their real estate allocations have limitations. Right. So once they bump up against to the top of those, they end up actually having to kind of pull out of the market and sit on the sidelines or pencils down, if you will, for a little while. It doesn't mean they're not looking at uh, very select opportunities. They still will, um, but they're not in a, you know, everything forward let's keep going um, on all fronts positions so it does allow for some of the equity partners out there that have had a harder time getting opportunities because they're competing with such large capital uh, to now come in and and potentially have better opportunities for buy um, so that's you need to kind of look at your source of capital there yeah so there's a bad side to it there's less money out there less equity right but yeah but also a lot of equity now has more opportunities. And we're finding that with some of our clients, they're like, they're just really loving this market because they can compete better and get better properties, right? Yeah, that's right. I mean, right now we're selling some assets mm -hmm. and the buyer pool, you know, we're always interviewing mm -hmm. buyers and mm -hmm. stuff like that. The buyer pool has changed. It's a lot mm -hmm. of actually 1031 buyers, which we have not mm -hmm. seen for a while. Mm -hmm. You know, um, the space that we typically invest into, the size is the 10 to $25 million ticket size for mm -hmm. equity. Mm -hmm. Right. So you're talking 30 to 75 million in, in total cost. Mm -hmm. And that space has largely been dominated by institutional investors in the last five years, for sure. Mm -hmm. um, and now we're seeing a lot of high net worth buyers, family offices, other mm -hmm. groups coming in. Yeah. And when you're a, a sponsor, you're a developer and you're looking at equity and you're looking at institutional equity versus other equity sources, what are some tips there? Yeah, I mean, right now, especially, you want to make sure you have alignment of interest mm -hmm. because you know we don't have a clear path necessarily ahead of us like mm -hmm. we've had in the last five years. Uh, we might have a little bit of a zigzag path here, and we don't know what you know the Fed's doing and mm -hmm. things like that, interest rates. So you're going to want to make sure you have a partner that has the same alignment of interest as you. You don't want to be forced to sell into this market at the wrong time. Uh, and then you're, you're going to want to be looking for longer term investors. Because again, we don't know how long this cycle's um, going for. We do know that values have come down. We're all seeing it, uh, but we're not sure how much more. We don't know how long that's going to be for. 
Uh, so we're, we're right now really looking for the dedicated, sticky, long-term capital partners. And I guess you've seen um, equity looking for higher returns today than they did, say, a year ago? So, you know, that's an interesting question because it's actually bifurcated. It's either equity that is doing exactly that because they see this as distressed opportunities. Distress in their mind means more return, right? If I'm going to take that risk, I should get paid for it. Uh, or you have a, a flight to perceived safety. The idea that, nope, I want to go into maybe debt, take some of that valuation risk off the table, or maybe I'm even just going to go into more core, really cash flowing uh, properties because I just don't want to play the game of the volatility. Yeah. What's interesting, uh, thinking about how the current market, uh, one of the things that we're seeing, we take properties out. You know, I think there's a general uh, consensus that there's not as many buyers and not as much funding out there, but there's a tremendous amount of buyers and equity out there looking for deals. And to your point, they all have different plans, right? Yeah. Um, and so one of the things we're seeing is just the pine demand dynamics right now are such that there's not a lot of supply for buyers and equity and, and sponsors to get into. So we're still seeing multiple offers and, uh, and, and, and some really pricing that sometimes surprises some, some sellers. Like, mm -hmm. really? It, 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 that, that's a lower cap than the cost of, uh, of the debt. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? mm -hmm. Really? That's really happening? Yeah, yeah. What are some other tips for kind of picking the right equity for your project? Well, again, I mean, you, you mentioned it, you know, on um, return expectations, mm -hmm. but really you, you need to be looking at what is it that they want to achieve in this next cycle, right? What are they trying to accomplish? And obviously by return, but also by their own portfolio construction, um, and their tax considerations, things like that. Uh, a lot of times what you said, what's happening on lack of supply is part of that is because they don't want to sell. If there's no a reason to sell right now, then a lot of people aren't. They have better debt than they're going to get for at least the next 18 months, potentially longer. Um, so they're not wanting to sell. So again, what's their motivations? What's their you know source of capital as well? Um, not everybody's source of capital is stable. We, it's funny because on the on the debt side, we've done this for a long time where we when we're looking at lenders, right? So we're right now we're talking about equity capital, but we need to also maybe touch a little bit on the debt sure. capital side we look at lenders and we've always underwritten what's the source of their capital, mm -hmm. right? A debt fund, for example, does not have the same source of capital as a regional bank, as we've learned, does not have the same capital as a federal bank, yeah. right? So that source of capital, and again, how sticky that capital is, mm -hmm. how available and liquid it is, do they have things like denominator effect, you know, impacting them? All of that now really matters. Right, right. All right, let's change the, the side here. Let's say we're, we're equity. Uh, we're high net worth individual, a family officer, or maybe institutional, we're looking for the right operating partners, especially in today's environment. What are some tips there? So we actually have this, this little trick that we refer to as the five P's. So it's, uh, let's see if I get this right here, right? People, product, process, position, and performance. So that's how we look at it. And, you know, people is this is a people business where we're you know, creating or we're acquiring the built environment for people. We're working with people to execute on that. So the first and foremost is you have to you know, find the right people that you wanna work with. Um, it, it, you know, there's, there's all of the hard considerations of can they actually execute? Do they have the team in place? Do they have access to the right resources? But then there's a soft factor. Then do you actually just like them? Right. Do you want to work with those people, right? right, right. Um, do you find them ethical? Things like that, right? right? Um, that's that's very important. Uh, we also consider, you know, in that, what's their performance? You know, what's their track record? You know, how have they done this in this type of environment? So I, I at one point, uh, did the little easy math and realized that if you are not in your early to mid 40s, you may not have been in a position to actually make decisions in a market environment like this before. Yeah. That's an intense statement. That's a good point. Yeah. yeah right. If yeah. you think about that, people, yeah. you know, and it's not to say that that people in their 30s aren't capable. They can bring fresh ideas. Right. right. And solutions to things. But it does mean that they probably were not in an investment making decision or execution decision role, right. you know, in the GFC. So being able to execute in the past 10 years does not necessarily predict execution for the next few years. Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, yeah. I've been through a couple recessions, uh, we'll show my age, and uh, 
so that experience uh, is is hard to replace. Right. And right. so and so there was some more P's there, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. So um, position, right? Um, what's their competitive advantages? How are they actually sourcing deals right now? You know, um, marketed deals, I mean, you mentioned are few and far between already. So off market deals need to be really pursued. You got to be proactive right now, right? Um, so that positioning relative to their competitors becomes really important as well right now. Um, and then the product, right? Mm -hmm. So this is something we, we focus on quite a bit is uh, what's the product today and how is it going to be impacted by demographic shifts, macroeconomic shifts, and even societal shifts. And we've just seen that with COVID. Mm -hmm. I mean, we just saw that um, we changed how we use office space. Mm -hmm. Right, for example, um, but we're also changing, you know, how we're doing things on the logistic side, the industrial side. Mm -hmm. Right. We saw the e-commerce boomed. Right. We all sat at home. What were we doing? Mm -hmm. Right. We were buying things. Right. So um, e-commerce really changed and and it drove the locations of industrial. It used mm -hmm. to be I need at least a 25 foot clear height and it's got to have this and that. And and now location matters as much or more than the built space because you know some of those large tenants that we know out there like amazon they need location right they're willing to take you know a 60s 70s vintage building that has direct access to major arteries yeah. so you have to look at the product and and design it around what's actually happening right in these major areas but and that you know the other one is um going local this one we think is really important. Mm -hmm. I, I kind of liken it to vacation planning. Mm -hmm. So you're saying to yourself, you've selected your product. I want to go to Hawaii, mm -hmm. right? Yep, going to Hawaii with my family this year. I've selected, you know, I want to be in a resort. I don't want to do an Airbnb. You do all your research, but then you and you, you set up, oh, I want to go scuba diving, all those things, right? Mm -hmm. um, and you can do all your research online, you know, all the macro level research. Mm -hmm. But reality is you show up. You talk to a local and all your plans might have just been blown out of line, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> because then you're like, oh, I didn't realize this beach is better than that beach. And yeah. this company is the company I should go with for the snorkeling than, rather than this one. There's just no replacement for going local and talking yeah. to local, right? You can do all that research that you do. So you got to leave a little room for all that local knowledge. Yeah, that's a good point because the local developers, the local sponsors are going to have more of a handle on probably tenants, on the market, on the impact, on everything, right? Absolutely. Uh, and they're the first to hear about it. Right. They have true real time. I mean, yeah. anything you're looking at, yeah. and the, I mean, the, all the research houses are fantastic, mm -hmm. right? I mean, we need them. But anything you're looking at is already happened. And it's right. happened a while ago, right? right? A quarter ago, maybe even six months ago. Right. So who actually knows what's happening, not only now, but what's coming, it's gonna be people on the ground, right? Yeah. So that live there, it's their community, they know the people at the local municipalities, all of it, yeah. right? That's who it's gonna be. And they can say, hey, I know, you know, for example, we have a, a opportunity that we did um, that was in a tertiary market. Normally not, we don't necessarily always go to really kind of tertiary mm -hmm. markets, but we, we were, you know, partnered up with a local operator who knew of this big, center that was going in for innovation and technology um, that was on the horizon it had just been passed right or or you know somehow not announced yet but with the local local municipality uh so we we knew that that was coming because of that partnership we had yeah. nobody else really was aware of that we weren't going to get in on that build but we knew that you know that's bringing five thousand jobs where are they going to live right Right. So we ended up partnering with them to build multifamily directly across the street from this location, which at the time was was nothing. It was just raw land. Right. right, right. So that ended up being a great play. But how would we have known that? Right. right. We're a na we have a national footprint. Right? right. We invest across the nation. And right. so the only way we can really uh, execute at that level is having those local partners. Yeah. But to get your view of, um, you know, as you're talking to sponsors and you're talking to developers and you're you're talking with equity out there, of, uh, and so you're kind of getting um, a, a, a different views, I guess, of the market. And one of the, the sectors that's obviously most in question, you've already mentioned, is office. Yeah. And I hear different opinions about, you know, when the demand might come back in the future. So I, I'm sure you're hearing a little bit of a mixed thing. But, but what's the overall trend of what you're hearing about folks' thoughts about the office sector? Yeah. So that's... Um, <laughs> you're hearing partly different mm -hmm. stuff because mm -hmm. it's different in different locations. Right. 
right? So we're based on the West Coast, mm -hmm. right? The West Coast, mm -hmm. uh, if we're not the, the last mm -hmm. to get back into the office, mm -hmm. uh, we, you know, we may be never fully <laughs> getting back into the office, yeah. right? Um, whereas the South mm -hmm. has, has a lot more of a return to office. Um, Northeast, parts of Northeast, are, it's very sprinkled. So it really depends on where you're at. Um, and either way, though, we're, we're seeing that across the board usage has gone down, mm -hmm. right? Um, interesting fact that recently came out was that uh, only a very small percentage of people are full-time working from home. I think we all have this perception mm -hmm. that people are all working from home now, right. right? And it's actually a very small percentage that are full-time working from home still. Most people who are working remotely are in a hybrid right. situation, right? So they still actually need office space. Right. They just might only need 70% or something right. of that office space. Yeah. So there's, you know, the, the argument that office is going away, we don't buy into that. Yeah. Um, but is there too much supply for the current demand? Yeah. yeah. And is that current demand probably going to be continually reduced from its peak? Yes, probably. Yeah. How much though, we don't know. So yeah. we're not, big investors in office. In fact, mm -hmm. we're not, we're only office that we're looking at right now is medical office. Mm -hmm. um, and the reason for that is we like to do anything where we can easily underwrite the demand profile. We right. understand what the tailwinds are and we understand um, how we can access, you know, the right real estate to support those tailwinds. Yeah. So um, we can't do that right now because yeah. nobody really knows, right? Um, what's going to happen, how, what our new peak is going to be. Is right. it 80% of the prior peak, 70%? Nobody really knows yet. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point, and and maybe you have to be local to even get a better feel for that's that. That's right. Yeah, that, right. And it's yeah. going to be interesting. You know, you think about new supplies probably going to be shut off pretty soon. Probably new projects are already probably shut down in the office sector. Yeah, yes, in the office, yes. and then and then you got some buildings that'll be torn down and yeah. some converted. Yeah. Um, so it's interesting to think about. Uh, you know, with the economy and the growth. You know, how long does it take demand to start improving again? And I've heard some people say, "Oh, twenty twenty four." You know, and then I have some people saying, no, it's going to be many, many years. You know, what, what are you feeling or hearing out there? I mean, it depends on, you know, if we're staying on office, I'm going to, I'm going to uh, stay out of that conversation. I don't know. Right. <laughs> right. I, I, again, I'm going to say, I'm not sure anybody really knows. Right. Um, and uh, I think that's, that's a hard one to predict. Yeah. In other areas, you know, multifamily, for mm -hmm. example, I mean, you know, there's lots of stats that we're somewhere between three and five million you know, um, un, you know, underserved right. units, right. right, across the United States. It's a large number. We could keep building for a while before we meet that need. Mm -hmm. But where do we build? Do yeah. we build in luxury? You know, no, probably not, right? Um, it's really in that kind of workforce and affordable level where we need those units. Yeah. So um, that demand has stayed strong. Demand in um, the niche asset classes. I mentioned mm -hmm. medical office, but mm -hmm you know, take storage, right? Mm -hmm. When we bought all that stuff over COVID, where'd we put it? Right. Right. Uh, right. We had to, you know, get more storage for right. all of that. Um, so storage has, has really taken off and, and still has a lot of tailwinds as well. You know, there's uh, data centers we've seen, you know, life science stuff that we've seen, that's all been driven up a lot. The capital, you know, inflows into that uh, have been stronger than the supply can keep up with. Yeah. Uh, so the niche asset classes actually have a, a lot of room to run fundamentally. Um, it's going to come down to availability of capital, both on the debt side and on the equity side. Um, that's what's driving the pricing right now. It's not the fundamentals so much on those asset classes. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. A, good, that's a good point. We just uh, uh, received an assignment to sell a foreclosed, beautiful ops building that's medical and lab, but it's mostly all vacant. So it's kind of interesting yeah. to see. We just hit the market with it to see. Oh, it's medical. It's lab. Oh, we want it. Well, it's vacant. Uh oh. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. Uh, what yeah. can we What can we pay for that? It's gonna be interesting to see. Yeah. Yeah. Well, oh. again, that's mm -hmm. really gonna come down to the capital demand for that space, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah because the the cash flow component. Yeah. So, and part of the reason why we like medical office is it's usually all fully pre leased. Yeah. Right. So yeah. you you can underwrite that cash flow stream really well. Right. Yeah, and, and the tenants don't move that much. They don't move. I, yeah. I always joke, mm -hmm. when's the last time you went to a dentist office and they were in a new building? <laughs> right? It's because right. They, right. they started their practice 20 years ago and they stayed in that location for 20 years. Right? That's right. Yeah, we find that with medical. We also find that with government leased office that we sell as well here. That yeah. uh, they're, yeah. they're very sticky. Yeah, very right. sticky. Very right. sti And their clientele is obviously, there's a government in that case or, right. you know, it's patients. And I don't know about you, but I don't like to change dentists. So, <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> right. Uh, until they hurt me, then I'm yeah, <laughs> then you're right. out. <laughs> then, then I'm out. That's right. Well, what would you leave your audience with to think about whether picking uh, 
equity providers or, or picking operators? Well, actually, I would I would say for the operators, just remember you got to be a good fiduciary for your equity partner. Mm -hmm. um, I think that that's uh, a very high value right now. Equity partners, they're not just looking for capability. They're also looking that you're going to be good stewards of their capital, right? Mm -hmm. And I think that we sometimes can lose sight of that, right? Mm -hmm. um, it's all about the execution and you know the product, but um, being a good fiduciary should not be underestimated as the operator. Mm -hmm. And for the equity, um, again, I would say you know you're trying to find that balance between fresh ideas, innovation. We, we not to get into a, a total wormhole of AI, so mm -hmm. I won't. But um, we have a lot of things on the forefront that are coming and are going to impact you know, everything that we do, mm -hmm. right, as a society, and, and in turn will impact real estate. You can't have everybody that's, you know, yes, been there in the GFC and therefore can navigate, right, uh, which is on the one hand good, mm -hmm. but you also have to uh, combine that with younger people who mm -hmm. know, you know, what's coming and think about it creatively and are ahead of that trend instead of reacting to that trend. Yeah. So finding that combination is different than we've seen in the past. It used to just be experience is key and that's it. Now it's kind of experience and innovation. Yeah, that's a good point. And the diversity, right? The different views and different Absolutely. ages and, and different, yeah. Yes, and it's, yes. It's amazing. We, we have a very diverse group here in, in a lot of different ways. And, and one is age, right? Yep. You know, we have folks in their 20s and we have folks in their 60s. Yeah. And, it's, and they learn from each other, right? Yeah. And they all add value. Yeah, and we were talking a little bit about, you know, where we grew up and, mm -hmm. you know, what our background is. And mm -hmm. that's very important, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, the way I grow up is completely different than somebody else. And mm -hmm. you you bring those um, values and those perspectives. Mm -hmm. You need to have a, a broad variety of that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you grew up in Oregon with dune buggies, right? That's right. That's what we were talking about. Fun, that's right. Fun stuff. That's right. And I grew up in Atlanta in the city, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, we had street bikes uh, and, and off-road right. stuff as well. Right, yeah. Fun. A colleague of mine was telling me he, he grew up in, mm -hmm. in New York, and he was mm -hmm. saying that they, you know, would just play on the street out front, try to avoid cars getting, you know, hit by cars. So yeah. very different than me out in the woods, right, yeah. with endless room. So very, very different perspectives. Yeah, it's funny. That brings back memories when I was a kid. It, it, you know, you drive down the street in our neighborhood, and you'd have to stop every block because there were kids playing in the street. Yeah, we, we, yeah. We play in the street. Yeah, so. yeah, right? That's normal. Yeah. That's normal, yeah, yeah. it was a good thing. Well, yeah. great information, Liza. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Yeah. Appreciate it. Thanks and, for having me. And thank you for joining us around the country. Uh, please let us know what you think. Uh, please share the show, if you will. Uh, please think about our sponsors uh, for referrals and business. And until next week, be sure that you always lead, learn, and laugh, and join us for America's Commercial Real Estate Show. America's Commercial Real Estate Show is brought to you by Bull Realty. For customized asset and occupancy solutions, visit bullrealty.com. Commercial Agent Success Strategies, incredible training for commercial agents. Visit commercialagentsuccess.com.